right, in this video here, we're gonna talk about one question type you need to know how to solve if you're gonna be taking the SAT. And it almost always shows up as one of the hardest questions on the calculator section, which are gonna be 29 and 30 for your multiple choice ones. And what you can see is I've grabbed some examples from the last two years of the test, is it's a really similar question time and time again. So once you understand how to approach this, it's gonna be something that you can keep in your back pocket and you're gonna be really comfortable handling when you see it on test day. This is percent increases and decreases. So as always, if you wanna go ahead, you can pause the video, take a shot at 29 here, but we're gonna jump on over, run through a little lesson, then we're gonna come back to these and hopefully you guys are all gonna understand exactly how to approach these. Now as always, if this video helps you out, please like, subscribe, share with any of your friends, but let's jump right into percent increase and decrease. All right, so for percent increase, decrease shows up really all the time for those late questions. So this is a basic way we can set this up, but we're gonna talk about a little bit more of a shorthand way that I always teach my students because this really helps it click a lot better for those difficult question types. So we're gonna kind of just go through this first example here. Jarvis Construction Company is building a new exit ramp for the local highway. The company initially said the project would take 250 days, but a forecast for bad winter weather led the company to estimate that the project is going to take 12% longer to finish. So this is the way you may have been taught back in math class, but the easy conceptual way, which makes so many of these problems click a lot better, is if you're ever doing an increase or a decrease, you're always doing one plus or minus the percent expressed as a decimal. Now, if we're applying that percent increase, we're gonna be multiplying. If we're undoing it, we're gonna be dividing. We'll get to that part in a second here. But since we are applying the percent increase because we know it originally was gonna take us 250 days and it's now gonna take 12% longer, we simply can do 250 times one plus our percent expressed as a decimal. So this is gonna be the same as 250 times 1.12 and that's gonna give us our answer of 280 without having to do all of the big setup here. Now, that's exactly what's kind of talked through here, so we're gonna skip over that part. But for our second example, we're gonna see one of what we can always think of as a percent reversal, where we are undoing the percent change that already happened. So here we see Tim grew 15% more tons of tomatoes in 2019 than in 2018. So really conceptually, all we're thinking about is, well, 2018's amount times 1.15, right? That's gonna be our one plus or minus is the percent. And since it's 15% more, we're doing 1.15 is gonna equal the amount he grew in 2019. But now for all these reversal problems, you're gonna be given the amount after the percent has already been applied. So only thing we know here is the amount we grew in 2019 so what we really can think about is now 1.15 times the amount in 2018 is going to equal 23. So now we're simply dividing out the 1.15. The other way we could write this out is because since we knew he grew 15% more in 2019 than in 2018, is what we could say is X is gonna equal 2018. We could simply say 1.15 times X is gonna equal 23. And so here, same exact thing we did in the kind of more talk through example, we're simply gonna be dividing by 1.15 and we can find our original amount. Now, the third really common variety we see is when we have kind of multiple percent increases or decreases in a row. But the same thing we always have to understand for all of these is simply our one plus or minus. And this example is usually where it really clicks for a lot of students if they felt a little iffy. So here, the price of a painting decreased by 8% in 2017. So that can be expressed because we always do one plus or minus the percent expressed as a decimal. 8% is the same as 0 0.08. So to start with, we can do one minus 0 0.08. It increased by 25% in 2018. So that part we can express as one plus 0 0.25. And it increased by 40% in 2019 that can be expressed as one plus 0 0.40. So what percent greater is the price of the painting in 2019 than the original piece at the beginning of 2017? Well, we could say P is our original price. You could also put X in here, but we could simply say P times that one minus 0 0.08 is 0.92. That one plus 0.25 is 1.25, and that one plus 0.4 is 1.4. 
So we're simply gonna multiply all of those values together and then we're gonna get 1.61p. But this is what you always have to remember with these percent increase decrease, which is where the number one mistake for students comes. It's always your one plus or minus is gonna tell you how much, when you're applying it, how much you've increased or decreased. But here, if we get our final value, it's the difference away from one, which is gonna tell us the amount we increased or decreased. So since we see 1.61, the 0.61 is gonna show us how much we increase by so therefore, that's going to be 61% higher than the price back at the start of 2017. The big framework you're always looking out for is one plus or minus. That is what all of these questions kind of come back to. So now we're going to jump back to those examples from these recent SATs. We're going to talk about applying this framework to each of those. All right, so for 29, and this is going to be the trickiest of the examples here, a quantity is decreased by 45% of its value. The resulting value is x. Which expression gives the value of the original quantity in terms of x? Well, to make this a little bit easier, we're just going to say that like our original quantity is going to be y. So what we know is we're decreasing y by 45% of its value, and then it's going to equal x. Well, that's going to be the same as y times 1 minus, right, because this is a decrease, our percent expressed as a decimal. So it's going to be the same as 1 minus 0.45 is going to equal x. Now this is going to give us y times 0 0.55, that's the same as 1 minus 0 0.45, is going to equal x. So if we want to solve for this so we can see what the original equation, what our original value is, right, which is y, we're just isolating for that value, we're simply going to be dividing both sides of this equation by 0 0.55, and that's how we can see that b is our right answer. Now, if this didn't click perfectly, strongly recommend you to kind of go back through this with some values. And we could just say that, well, y equals 100. So if we're decreasing y by 45%, that means that x is going to equal 55. And if you do 55 divided by 0 0.55, it's going to equal 100. So this is a little bit of a test trick we, you can use with plugging numbers in to find your original answer. But if we can just conceptually understand the framework, we can really start to make sense of these questions easily. Now we'll go through the next three that are all really similar and quite a bit easier. Hongbo, Hongbo sold X cell phones in 2013. The number of cell phones he sold in 2014 was 128% greater than in 2013. So this one here is exact same basically as example two. And this is gonna be the same framework we saw with example three back in, in our book here. So. The number that he sold in 2014 was 120% greater, 128% greater than in 2013. So we'll just say that, right, X is gonna equal our 2013 value. Well, now this is gonna be the same as one plus, and since it's 128%, it's gonna be 1.28 is what we're adding in, right? 28% we'd be adding in 0.28, but 128% we're adding in 1.28. And the number of cell phones he sold in 2015 was 29% greater than 2014. Well, that's going to be the same as 1 plus 0.29. So all we're now looking for here is we're going to have x times 2.28 times 1.29. So now we just have to see which answer choice gives us one that looks like that. And that's simply going to be d. As long as we understand our one plus or minus, we can really start to work through these questions quite easily. Now we'll take a look at these 29 and 30 from two other tests. The expression 0.7x represents the result of decreasing a positive quantity x by what percent? What we always know, right, it's one plus or minus our percent expressed as a decimal. So all we're really looking for here is, well, one minus basically we'll say y is gonna equal 0 0.7. This is just, all we're looking for is just the difference between these two. And that's just simply gonna give us, we'd have to have one minus 0 0.3 is gonna equal 0 0.7. So that's gonna tell us how much we've decreased by. It's simply just gonna be 30% because all we're thinking is one minus 0.3 equals 0.7. You don't even really have to do all this Y stuff. You can keep it extra simple like that. Very similar thing here with question 30. It's literally just the opposite of what they put on this other test. The number of books in a library increased by 30% from 2002 to 2014. 
there were X books in 2002. Which expression represents the number of books in 2014 in terms of X? Well, here we're simply doing a 30% increase. So we're simply doing one plus 0 0.3. Well, that's simply gonna give us X times 1.3, which is gonna give us 1.3 X. 30% increase, we're gonna see 1.3. 30% decrease, we're gonna see 0 0.7. So hopefully you feel a lot more comfortable with this concept and what this video also kind of shows you is how incredibly consistent the SAT is with what they put on the test. Um, if you have any questions on this, you can always drop that in the comments below. I'd be more than happy to film another video going a little more in depth if anyone feels uncomfortable. Um, but otherwise, as always, if this helps you out, please like, subscribe, share with this with some of your friends.